Have you ever thought, man, I wish I was more attractive, but unfortunately there's nothing I can do about it? Well, how much of our genetics actually plays into our appearance? Well, probably a lot. I mean, it is our genes. But does that mean that no matter what we do, that we can never change our appearance? Obviously no, right? Like if someone goes to the gym and they start working out, obviously they can start getting bigger and start getting bigger muscles. But what about our facial features? Well, this is what separates our environment from our genes. And the way that our environment affects our genes can affect the way that our genes are expressed. For example, a lot of people are quick to blame genetics for things like having crooked teeth or having a smaller jaw. But if you look at our ancestors, you'll see that they never had any of these problems. All the skulls from our ancestors, at least from over a thousand years ago, have shown that they have these really wide, spacious jaws, and they have all their teeth in the right place. There was no such thing as orthodontics or anything like that back then. They never got braces or Invisalign, but they still magically had straight teeth. And even cooler is, all their wisdom teeth came in too, in the right place. Now we always hear that people just need to get their wisdom teeth taken out, or there's just no room for their wisdom teeth to come in. But our ancestors never had that problem. So it's pretty clear that our jaws have started getting a lot smaller pretty recently. And if you look at all the evidence, it'll be traced not to a change in our genes, but to a change in our environment. These are specifically things like what we eat, how we eat, where we live, and how we are breathing. So one of the biggest things was a change in our diets. So our ancestors used to eat harder foods that require a lot of chewing, but they would also be hunting and eating a lot of raw foods. Nowadays, we have really soft and mushy foods that do not require much chewing. And when you don't chew as much, then you don't really trigger the stem cells in your jaw. And if you don't trigger the stem cells in your jaw, then your jaw will not start growing and expanding. And it's not just that either. Humans have started living indoors. We don't live in the wilderness anymore. But as a result, now we're exposed to a lot more dust and other things that can cause allergies, and this can cause breathing problems. So now people have these smaller jaws because they're eating these mushy foods, and they have these breathing problems from all this dust and stuff like that, and then it's gonna keep causing more problems with their jaws. Because now you're more likely to become a mouth breather. If we grow up and we're always breathing through our mouth, that means that our mouth is always gonna be hanging open. And what happens is our face tends to grow in that elongated direction. And this is also gonna further cause our jaw to be smaller and more narrow and contribute to those crooked teeth because there's just no room for those teeth to come in. Now instead, if we have proper oral posture, then our lips are gonna be closed, our tongue is gonna be resting against the roof of our mouth, and our teeth are gonna be slightly touching. If our mouth posture is like this at all times, then we are gonna be way more likely to develop a wider face that can inhabit all of our teeth. But sometimes people have something called a tongue tie, where their tongue is kind of glued to the floor of their mouth because they have this really strong attachment. Now, ideally, this should be clipped when we are born, but sometimes it just isn't clipped for one reason or another, or that tongue tie kind of grows back. If you have an issue like that, then you're obviously gonna be more likely to be a mouth breather, because if your tongue can't touch the roof of your mouth, then your jaw is more likely to always hang open, and you're more likely to breathe through your mouth more, and again, have that narrower jaw. Now, these are just some of the changes that have happened in our environment that have prevented our genes from expressing fully. And this is called our phenotype, or what is actually expressed from a gene. And this is possible to change. It can change from stress, or having a nutrient deficiency, or having problems with the fetus, etc. And what we're seeing is not all evolution is for the best. This is more of a cultural evolution, and the evolution of us having smaller jaws really does no benefit. It actually does way more harm than good. Because we have evidence that us having smaller jaws not only makes us more unattractive, it also contributes to a lot of different diseases that we're seeing today. These are things like sleep apnea, obesity, ADHD, eczema, heart disease, and also things like allergies, having a lowered IQ, even like depression, and also Alzheimer's. All of these diseases or problems are related with someone having a smaller jaw, on top of just being more unattractive. Now, what do I mean by attractive? Well, really I'm talking about a healthy face. Socially, having a wider face and a stronger jawline is viewed as more healthy. And this is compared to someone that has a chin that's more kind of pushed back. And the reason that this is healthy is because when you have a wider jaw with your chin and your jaw more forward, then you are way less likely to have things like sleep apnea. It's very unlikely that our ancestors snored or had any sort of sleep apnea just because their jaws were so big and their airways were so open. Now, what can you do about it if you want to improve your appearance and you want to change your environment? Well, if you're an adult, 
it's gonna be a lot harder, but there's still some things you can do. Number one is gonna be breathe through your nose at all times. And yes, it can change your appearance. So a guy named James Nestor, who is a journalist, he wrote a book called Breath, and it's basically about breathing and the dangers of mouth breathing and the importance of nasal breathing. But he did an experiment where he basically plugged his nose for 10 days straight so he had to become a mouth breather. The first thing he noticed is he was tracking his sleep and he had instant sleep apnea and snoring. So before the study, he did not snore. And during the study, he would snore about four hours a night. Also, his blood pressure went up and his doctor even said that he simply looked like crap. And there's also other studies like this one where they switched people from becoming nose breathers to mouth breathers in just their sleep. And they found that their sleep quality went way down. And also people went from not having any sleep apnea to having very severe sleep apnea. Think about it, if you are tired and you're not getting good sleep, then obviously you're not gonna look your best. Your face will be more droopy, your eyes will have bags, you're just gonna look tired. So what I recommend doing is one, using a nasal dilator strip. That's basically a piece of tape that goes over your nose that can help dilate your nasal passages and also combining that with a mouth tape. So the tape that I use is called a 3M Micropore Paper Tape. All you gotta do is rip off a little piece and tape it over your lips. And this will encourage you to breathe through your nose all night long. Now, if your nose is more blocked or harder to breathe through, then you can also try doing a nose unblocking exercise. So basically what that is, is you're gonna do a quick inhale and exhale. And then after that exhale, you're gonna hold your breath and bob your head back and forth until you have a medium to strong urge to breathe. So it's gonna look kind of like this. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I have about a strong urge to breathe, and then I'm gonna recover for one minute by breathing through my nose. And then after that minute, I'm gonna repeat that exercise and do it a total of six times. What you'll find is after doing this six times, then your nose should really start to open up. But it's really important here to make sure you keep breathing through your nose once your nose opens up, otherwise your nose will kind of block again. Now, if you wanna learn more about that, I talk more about how to unblock your nose in detail and why exactly that works, and I'm putting a link to that video in the description below, so make sure you check that out. But another thing you can do is tongue exercises. So this is more for your posture overall, not just your overall posture, but also your head and neck posture. Basically, all you do is you put your tongue against the roof of your mouth, and then you make this big smile, and then you open your jaw until your tongue falls. And you do that about 25 to 30 times, two times a day. So it'll look kind of like this. What that does is it really strengthens your tongue muscles and it also strengthens your neck muscles because your tongue is also connected to your neck. And if you improve all of this, not only can it help improve your tongue and help improve your oral posture, it can also help keep your head back and not get that forward head tilted posture. It's kind of like a natural neck lift. Now I did talk a little bit about tongue ties where your tongue is kind of glued to the floor of your mouth. Now sometimes what you might need is a little surgery where you clip that bottom of your tongue to kind of release and give you more freedom with that tongue. Now, if you're looking in the mirror and you see that attachment, you're probably wondering if you need that surgery or not. So a simple test to do is put your tongue against the roof of your mouth, and I'm talking about the whole tongue, not just the tip of your tongue, like the tip and the middle and also the back part of your tongue, and see if you can fit two fingers in your mouth when they're overlapped like this. So it'll look kind of like this. If you're able to fit two fingers in your mouth, then you pass the two finger test and you probably do not need any sort of surgery. But if you cannot fit two fingers, I'd highly recommend you go to your dentist and talk about getting a tongue tie release and see if they can refer you to someone or even do it for you. Just know that if you do that surgery, first of all, it's really simple to do, but you have to do some sort of exercises afterwards and they'll probably go over that with you, but some sort of tongue exercises because if you don't do that, then it'll probably regrow again. Now, the last thing you can do to improve your appearance is basically these exercises to strengthen your chewing muscles. So first, that would be chewing with proper oral posture. So instead of chewing with your mouth open and letting that food kind of get everywhere, make sure you chew with your mouth closed and try to chew an even amount on both the right and the left side. That will really help develop those jaw muscles of yours and kind of help define those as well. Also chewing gum in between meals, making sure it's sugar free. And if you really want to get fancy, there's something called a jawser size out there that basically does that and more. It kind of strengthens your jaw muscles and it's basically this workout for your mouth. Now I would be a little careful with that. If you have some sort of TMJ problems or jaw problems in general, then if you overdo this, then it can really 
exacerbate or make those problems worse. So be careful with it too. We know sleep is important, but I'm willing to bet that there's some things that you just didn't know that being sleep deprived could do. So today I'm gonna go over six surprising things you probably did not know about being sleep deprived. Number one is it makes you more emotionally volatile. Studies show that employees who are underslept to 